a man who went through 17 fascist concentration camps, prisoner number 10491, who survived both in Buchenwald and on the death barge, so that after all this, he would become a seven-time Olympic champion and one of the greatest athletes on the planet. Life of Viktor Ivanovich Chukarin is not an example of strength and spirit. His life can be a great lesson in courage, patience, and struggle. Nowadays, people love to indulge their weaknesses, feel sorry for themselves, and at any opportunity, they are ready to declare, I have no more strength. And who knows, maybe the story of Chukarin can make them look at life differently. Victor Chukarin was born on 9th November 1921 in the village of Red Army of Donetsk region, in the family of Don Cossack and a Greek woman. The family soon after the birth of their son moved to Mariupol, where Victor went to school. From the first years of education at school, thanks to his physical education teacher, he has been actively engaged in gymnastics. The hobby was gaining momentum. After graduating from school, Chukarin studied at the Mariupol Metallurgical College, continuing to seriously engage in gymnastics. Then the young guy, who felt that his hobby was becoming a matter of his whole life, transferred to the Kiev College of Physical Education. 19-year-old Viktor Chukarin won the title of Champion of Ukraine and fulfilled standard of Master of Sports of the USSR. The ambitious athlete dreamed of success at the USSR Championship, but Black June 1941 changed the life of Viktor Chukarin just like the lives of tens of millions of other Soviet people. With the beginning of the Great Patriotic War, Victor volunteered to go to the front. He becomes a gunner of the 1044th Regiment, 289th Division of the Southwestern Front. However, in the Poltava region, part of it is surrounded. Unable to escape from the boiler, many fighters from the personnel of the unit were captured. Among them was Victor Chukarin, who was captured after being wounded and shell-shocked. The Stalag XB, Sandbolstal concentration camp replaced his name to 10491 number and began the hell, which stretched out on a long three and a half years. The Nazis repeatedly transported Chukarin from place to place. Buchenwald became the 16th concentration camp on this list. Here, he spent about a year and managed to survive only thanks to a coincidence, despite several attempts to escape. Victor had to go through 17 concentration camps, through overwork, illness, hunger, when every day could be the last. Nevertheless, Victor used every opportunity to do gymnastics, and even learn gymnastics from the German guards. Gymnastics before the war was a cult sport in Germany, and athletes in this country considered the strongest in the world. During the offensive of American troops in the spring of 1945, the SS began to evacuate Buchenwald. Chukarin was transferred to Sandbostel, 60 kilometers west of Hamburg. When the Nazis had to retreat from there, they locked up part of the prisoners in the hold of the barge, which they were about to flood. However, at that moment, British aviation struck. The barge with Chukarin and the rest of the captives was carried off to the open sea. The prisoners were picked up by an English ship. All of them were extremely exhausted. When Victor came home, he was not a brave athlete, but a human shadow. The skeleton covered with skin, eyes of very old man, even his own mother did not recognize him. A goner weighing 40 kilograms had to think not about sports, but about restoring health. It would seem that the road to big sport is closed, but not for someone who firmly decides to become the first. Victor Chukarin received a passport. He was in captivity became a student at the Lviv Institute of Physical Education, and soon his victorious ascent to the top of gymnastics began. In the first post-war national championship in gymnastics in 1946, he finished on 12th place. For a man who the year before was between life and death, it was a huge success, but Jukavrin had quite different purpose. A year later, at the same tournaments, he becomes the fifth, and in 1948, 27-year-old Viktor Chukarin for the first time became the champion of the USSR. 
A year later, the athlete wins the title of absolute champion of the country and retains the title for two more years. The dream has been fulfilled. You are already 30 behind the camp torments and grueling workouts. Is it time to find a quieter occupation? Nothing like this. Victor Chukarin has a new goal, the Olympics. In 1952, at the Olympic Games in Helsinki, Chukarin joined the USSR Olympic team. Newcomers are looked at with a mixture of curiosity and nitpicking. Can these guys and girls from the country of Comrade Stalin compete with the best athletes in the world? 31-year-old Viktor Chukarin, even by much softer standards than now post-war gymnastics, was considered a veteran. Debutant and veteran in one bottle, a funny combination. But Chukarin had no time for fun. He had to prove to the whole world his sport's viability and the viability of the country he represented. The result was the gold medal performance in the team competition and the victory of Viktor Chukarin in the absolute superiority. From Helsinki, the 31-year-old Chukarin returned in the rank of four-time Olympic champion. He won four golds and also two silver. He, like no one else, had every right to rest on his laurels. He, like no one else, deserved it. But the people of that era were made of some special alloy of courage, stamina, and will. Two years later, in 1954, he became a three-time world champion. He repeated his triumph at the next Olympics, the 16 Summer Games in Melbourne in 1956. Here, Shukarin again won the absolute championship and won medals of all merits, three gold, a silver, and a bronze. In the entire history of Olympic tournaments in artistic gymnastics, only three athletes managed to become absolute Olympic champions twice. Italian Alberto Bragli, Japanese Sawao Kato, and Victor Chukarin. But neither the Italian nor the Japanese has not experienced what Soviet athlete experienced on his way to success. This life drama is a ready-made script for an Oscar-winning film. Shocked rivals told reporters, This man is impossible to win. Miscalculations act on him only as a call for new attempts. In 1957, Viktor Ivanovich Jukarin was awarded the Order of Lenin. At the end of performances in big sports, Jukarin worked at the Lviv Institute of Physical Education. In 1972, at the Munich Olympics, he was the head coach of the Soviet gymnastics team. He was always laconic, very modest, did not like to remember what fell to his lots, did not seek sympathy, experiencing troubles and failures alone. Viktor Ivanovich Chukarin died 25th August 1984. He was only 62. At his funeral in Lvov gathered friends, teammates and students. But the years go by, and the glory of sport is not eternal. Today about Viktor Chukarin remembers only fans with the experience of gymnastics, and I think it is extremely unfair. Friends, I ask you to help spread this video, because tens of thousands of people can learn about this incredible person and athlete. To do this, you just need to rate, leave your comments, and share this video. Without your support, this video will continue to gather dust on the shelves of the channel. Take care of yourself and be healthy.